When Benzino went to war with Eminem, your COO at the time, Jeremy Miller, he's quoted as saying the magazine went from selling something like 380,000 copies a month on the newsstands to 270,000 copies a month. And that was in less than a year. So that's a huge decrease in revenue for the magazine. Now, granted, like you said, you guys had long moved on from record labels being your primary source of revenue. We get it. You were doing business with McDonald's and many corporate brands out there. But looking back, you spent so much time not only working for monetary revenue, but there's a credibility that comes with the fan base that you built over years and years of sweat equity. And now you're seeing that fan base leave. So Benzino going back and forth with Eminem, not only did it take a financial toll on the company at the newsstands, you're seeing a lot of the fan base go. You, as the founder, you're in the same position that many of the editors you accused years ago um, where they were taking sides against artists and you felt so strong that there was no place for that in this publication. And you're right there in the same predicament that you had once gone to war with people who were editors at your magazine. Is this something in hindsight that you would change? Was this a huge mistake on behalf of yourself and Benzino? Would you change it if you had the chance? Yeah, again... I mean, you know, that quote and those statistics from Jeremy, you know, and, and Jeremy's my guy. You know, I got love for Jeremy. He started, you know, as an intern in 1991 and, you know, became the, actually became the CEO of the company after I left. Um, and, but I'm not sure that those numbers are completely accurate. Um, also, I don't think you could attribute the decline in newsstand sales strictly to, you know, the the situation with Eminem. Again, this is the dot com era is thriving. Magazine sales are declining. There's other factors. So the point really I'm saying is that's not the thing that caused the downfall financially of the source. The stuff I talked about before, in my opinion, those are the things that were the more significant factors. So if I had to change anything, it would probably be taking out that $12 million loan and gambling on the dot com. You know, that's what I fucked up. If I hadn't done that, I don't think I think things would have been different even coming through the M&M situation because we were coming out of that. You know, it was we were getting behind and, and, you know, we were still source awards was still happening. You know, we were still getting tons of advertising. People still love the source. I think, you know, a lot of these narratives also come from people in the music industry and in the media industry. I don't believe a lot of these narratives come from the fans, the people in, you know, Chicago that went and bought the source every month at their local record store year after year after year or the people you know, in whatever, in, in, in Houston, whatever. I think as far as fans go, I don't think the narrative comes from them. You know, this was a big thing in the music industry. Interscope and Universal Music controlled almost 80% of all the hip hop being sold at that time. Everybody was on Universal or Interscope's payroll. Everybody was getting money and dependent on them, no matter whether you worked at a label, worked at a radio station, worked wherever, you were getting money out of Universal because they were paying people, whatever, payola, we know, you know all the things that go on in the music industry. Um, so a lot of people either didn't say nothing or took that side, but there's a lot of people that I believe respected, you know, the source's position um, on these things, but just 
were too scared to speak out and support us and, and because it would have impacted their livelihood. And that's understandable. I don't blame anybody for that, but that's just the reality of, of, of what the situation was.